Hi guys, welcome back. Just putting some finishing touches on the uh, Kingway alignment tool. This is the, I guess we're calling them trunnions now, that uh, connect all the, the big rods together. Here's one of the rods with the precision ball on the end. I didn't want the things to uh, look bad, so I decided to put some glue blue on, or gun blue, not glue blue. Why does it make things turn black? Seems like the marketing department got that wrong, didn't they? Anyway, I wanted this because this has got a, some little slits that spread the two parts apart, and I don't want to get paint all inside there. So I decided I'd put some gun blue on them, make them look nice, and then gun blue doesn't protect against rust, so you still got to put some oil on it, but heck, we do that to everything else, don't we? So that's what I'm finishing up. Tonight's video is going to be a little bit different, though. This is, uh, I've just returned from visiting Clark over at Windy Hill Foundry, and that's the name of his YouTube channel. Now, Clark has a foundry in the hills of Mississippi, and I've been there before casting the rails for a project about a year and a half ago, and I dropped off a casting that I wanted him to make of an Axelson bed lathe uh, clamp. So, I didn't want to lose my part that I'd left there. He called and said it was ready, so I was going there anyway. And he actually was talking to Don, because Don's the one that needs it for his machine. And he mentioned to Don that he was casting a part for the tally-ho. Now, the tally-ho is a 103, 4, 5, 6 year old uh, sailing ship that's being rebuilt up in Port Townsend now by Leo. And I always wanted to go up there and work on it, but they had a requirement that you had to be there for a month and I couldn't spend that kind of time. I understand why I had the requirement, you know, bringing somebody new into your shop and showing them where the tools are, not knowing what he can do, having to watch over. By the time you get comfortable and he knows what they're doing, month's gone. So I understood. I went and worked on the Seeker for a couple weeks. Anyway, I've always had a soft spot in my heart for that ship. And Keith Rucker and um, Clark are rebuilding the capstan for it. Now, capstan is a thing that's up at the front that pulls up the anchor, and one of the cast iron pieces is bad, and Clark's rebuilding that part. So they were going to pour it. And I said, can I come, please? Can I come? So I took off, met him over there on Saturday, and had a good old time. I'll let Clark tell you how that one went. In fact, I'm not here to show you everything about the Tally Ho project, because Clark's handling that part, okay? But one thing that Clark said was he got a new a lot of new subscribers from the Tally Ho project. He said, and some of them are kind of down on him and accusing him of not knowing what he's doing and stuff like that. You know, I firmly believe that God did not meant for everyone to have a keyboard. Period. A lot of people just go on talking about stuff that they don't know anything about. And I truly believe that Clark does know what he's doing. If he ever had to prove it to anybody, it wouldn't be me, but I was there for four days this time, and I followed Clark along with a camera. I did something that Clark can't and never does do. I filmed the actual process that he went through to make a mold to recreate this part for the tally hole. I'm not here to show you the real story of how that was done so much as I am to show you exactly what it takes to do it. 
and it's a lot. That one little piece that they needed took a mold this big. It weighed 350 pounds by the time we made it. Three layers, five cores, have to do one, take it apart, roll it over, and not break anything. It's intense. Poor Clark's got a lot of pressure on him to get it done. Well, I followed him along, and this is going to be the little shories I'm going to show you over the next couple of films. Uh, tonight, I'm going to show you what it took to come up with the idea of how to put a core in the center of this thing and have it resist the influx of 3,000 degree water-thin cast iron roaring through a, a, a sand casting and not get destroyed by the heat, washed out of position. You know, we had to hold it very tight tolerances. So this is tonight going to be showing you how we made the core for that and how it progressed. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you, Clark, for letting me come. Oh, by the way, the last video I showed a big vice that I had for sale, one person wrote to me, and, and I don't know how I did it, but I've lost your email. So if you're still interested, please send me another email, and I'll promise to be more careful. Oh, I got kind of worried when I got to Clark's. He had a new sign up, and I ended up having to sneak around the back door. Hmm. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Well, guess where I am? Spending the day with Clark again. We have a new addition. Kind of stopped me at my tracks for a minute, but. Dear Nate. Yeah. I'm watching Clark use his laser to make Falcon. us a little plug. Falcon 2 Pro. A Falcon 2 Pro. I'm going to do a video. And that's a close enough fit right there. Let me so see. what we're doing is making a plug so we can make a core real quick Actually, I to could, hold a rod. I could make it a little bigger. But I'm not too worried about You know, about that took about 30 seconds for yeah. you to program that thing and go. Uh-huh. It's a handy little tool to have around here. Yeah. I did a couple of uh, demos on a laser that somebody sent me. It isn't anywhere like this one. Yeah, I have. Uh... I mean, mine was pretty much useless for what I do. I don't know how well this would do for the rest of the stuff, but I'd have to look into finding one of these. Well, it has sure been handy. And I'm going to make a through hole, and we said 275. Yes, sir. He's using what, light burn? Yeah. Made a little. Yeah. And now we got a little disc with a hole in it. <clears throat> and the software is easy to use. Yeah. That's just the standard light burn software, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let me you grab mean, one of my... I, try, I hate wasting. Well, you're not wasting anything. So. It's got a smoke hood. Yeah. You told me they think that this... Uh, you don't have to use glasses with this machine with that. That's right. It comes in pretty handy. He's got a... Stuck out the wall. Yeah. I'm just looking to see where I need to be. Now that I got that fit from here, cut two of those. You got it. Wow. 
Yeah, I'm going to do that. This has kind of got a double protection. It's got a glass around the laser, and then this outer glass. Yeah. Gets rid of all the smoke. If I need to figure out if it works on metal more for what I need, but you said what, this is a 40 watt? Yeah, this is a 40 watt <coughs> diode laser, so you wouldn't, this wouldn't be handy for, or practical for cutting steel, because it right. won't. They say it will cut stainless steel, I've never tried it, never had a need for it, but for what we do here, oh, we do a lot of wood wood pattern making yeah and, uh, i mean you got this is, things scattered everywhere you yeah, made yeah these are all even the flask over there will do it these are, <laughs> these are flasks he made for pouring little ambles and cut every bit of it out on the machine got a handle or alignment pin place now see that's handy that's what he's pouring right there He's already through cutting it? Yeah, and one of them fell through the honeycomb, but that's okay, because this has a drawer. I'll be dark. You won't have to go dragging your raking Now that, that, you. that, uh, I gotta get my hands on one of these. Nice. I'm taking this one. Goodbye, Clark. <laughs> All right. So you did something about 30 seconds that would have taken me an hour to find the tools to make. Yeah. Shit. And that's close enough for what we got to do. What we're doing is we're making a core to put in this mold. And we got to keep this central. We got to keep the axis of this rod right down the middle. Yeah. We want to we want to hold our core tolerance within uh, five thousandths true position to the. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that uh, that'll take care of that. Now we just got to ram that sodium silicate in between. Yep. So we're gonna have to take the spacer out. We're gonna leave about this much of the rod. You know what we ought to do is we ought to take a tube of some kind and glue onto that. So you could use it as a ram. But we're trying to get through. I gotta get back to Houston. Yeah. Mississippi, my visa is running out. <laughs> um but we can pack it pretty good, then line it up. Yeah. Well, I could You know if you I had to cut this to length. And I was thinking about just ramming up some more of those discs. And then using it and, and using pushing it, it for through. A cylinder. Yeah. Yeah. Let me do that. Okay. Didn't huh. take long. These are quarter inch. How long does this save this rod? Twelve inches. That's what we need. Well, I like this. When I was sent to demo, had a smoke cover on it, but uh, it wasn't near the quality of this one. And all right, that's a little short demo for you guys. Clark's playing with glue again. Yeah. One day I will do it. A little laser. You made all of those in what, 10 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. That opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Yeah. We, uh, we use it for a lot of stuff. That glue's probably frozen, you know. You got me out here in the <laughs> cold. Subarctic temperatures. That's all Steve's been doing since he's been here is complaining. <laughs>
Damn right. Good to be like Don. Can't take the cold anymore. Well, that was a good one. Yeah. Hey, that glue worked. Yeah. Kept us all together. Yeah. What we're doing is making a, a, a cylinder piston. that we can push out of that little pipe over there as the uh, silicon sand gets pushed in. It'll expel this out the bottom, that way you know we got it packed good. Right. It's taking longer to put them together than it was to cut it out. Yeah. That's what's amazing to me. Yeah, if only they'd make a laser that would do this, see. Right? Put it together? Yeah. Oh, they do. Oh, they do. Or they will. We should have meant one. Yeah. simple jobs that nobody ever sees that you have to do to make things work yeah. got a lot of weird special projects that require a lot of thought behind it seems like everything you do is a prototype yeah. instead of production yeah and it takes, shoot, I don't even know how long it takes compared to regular production. Once you figure everything out, it's easy. Yeah. Just got to make sure I don't have any steps on these. Yeah. All those got to line up to fit through there. It doesn't yeah. have to be, we want it a little bit smaller because we're pushing it through. <laughs> oh, I'm wasting camera time here. I'm going to turn it off for a okay. minute. If you'd hurry, I wouldn't have to do that. Yeah, I know. Slow as molasses, huh? Well, it's cold. Well, Clark's assembled all of those pieces. Now he's going to assemble them all together. We were just talking about before that, if you didn't have that laser, you'd have to find an old broomstick or something and turn it down on a lathe and try to drill a straight hole through the whole mess. Mm -hmm. That'd be tough. Yep. And I've had to do stuff like that before. I've had to do some strange things just to get a job. I don't want to hear about the strange things, Clark. <laughs> no, no, no. This is a PG rated show, okay? Yeah. Clark's over here doing strange things in the wild of Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> this ain't Alabama. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, don't 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 get us mixed up with people from Alabama. Okay, man. okay. There's a humorist. She just died last, I think, last year. Jeannie uh, Roberts. And look up her YouTube channel. She is a funny, funny lady. Jeannie Roberts. Jeannie Roberts, and she every year would give a, a, a video uh, or make a video of her, her show. Uh -huh. And it was always held at uh, Elon University. And she had some of the funniest, funniest stories. <laughs> and she said, uh, she said, uh, is anybody here from, uh, I think it was South, uh, South Carolina? No, yeah, South Carolina, she said. Well, you know, those people in South Carolina make fun of us up here in North Carolina. But that's all right. 
because we make fun of the people over in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's always got somebody to pick on. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I used to live in West Texas, and Aggie jokes were the, the norm up there. Aggie jokes. I don't know who the Aggies make fun of. <laughs> Texas, I guess. Oh. We're almost there. I hope that's going to be long enough. I think it will be. This make, is the uh, core right here. Yeah. And, you know, we don't We can have make to, some more. It yeah. doesn't have to be the whole thing. Yeah. We're going to actually uh, have about two thirds of that pipe full of sand before we even start raining. Yeah. Yep. Main thing is, I'm not as worried about the inside as I am the outside. Yeah. Got to go through the pot. Right. I don't want it to. And you know what? I'm going to hit it on the belt sander out there. Just, and just uh, slick it up. Slick, yeah. That's a new word I've learned around over here. We slick things up yeah, real good. We do. We don't shelve anything, but we <laughs> slick things up. New word of the day, huh? Huh. Try that, YouTubers. Yeah. I, I told Clark that I had some shelving I was going to do, donate to the cause that I didn't use you know, anymore. My wife is tickled to death over that, by the way. Well, glad to help. Wasn't doing me any good just taking up room. But I don't think they understood what I was saying or I, my Texas twang had, had thrown them off. So they Googled what shelving meant. <laughs> and... They were concerned, to say the least, that uh, y'all Google shelving and see what it tells you. I'm too afraid to do it. <laughs> yeah, and I told her, I said, well, I don't think that's what Steve had in mind. <laughs> I had a few weeks. She was here. What's that? She was kind of concerned. Yeah. Well, I would have been too. But I think <laughs> that's not what shelving means to, in Texas. <laughs> she was trying to figure out what 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 it was. Was it shelving just one board, or or what I was bringing her? <laughs> All right. So that's the way you make yourself a broomstick handle with a hole in it. Yeah. We're using the laser. And the sander I'm fixing to use, the spider on that, uh, oh, what do they call it, that Lovejoy coupling? Yeah. I kept <laughs> destroying them, so I made an MDF spider, and now that thing's holding up. Out, right. out of the leather? Out of, out of MDF. The, with the laser. Well, well, I noticed on those boxes you made, the dead gum things are uh, dovetails. Yeah. How uh, easy was that joints. to figure out? Finger joint. It, it wasn't that hard. You just, uh, <clears throat> I, I uh, <clears throat> got to make sure that I can slide that in and out. And it's. This has to come off, right? Well, we can melt it out of there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's see. See if it sticks in your tube. Huh? See if it'll stick in your tube. Well, I got a feeling, uh, just being on the safe side, we're going to put it on the belt sander. Clean, I don't want clean, it, clean it up. I don't want to start it on there until that glue dries a little bit. Yeah. But uh, I can go ahead and be belt sanding it. I'm going to go ahead and do that.
It's like a dead gum shish kebab. Yeah, it looks like it done. Or a yard dart one. Yeah. They don't let us have yard darts anymore. <laughs> Gotta have that where that's gonna slide up and down on the rod now. I'm gonna pull this out and get that rod going. Give him what you're doing. I'd say that's it right there. I had to come over here and do a little housekeeping. Clark's not been keeping my sticker clean. I don't know how the other guys feel about it, but I have to come over here and keep my own sticker clean. It's what ten hour trip to get here just What's to that? clean the sticker. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid it's gonna get covered up like everybody else is with dust. Well, I fixed it. What you doing? Getting this mess stirred up without getting it on my hands. That ain't gonna happen. I think you failed. It? Yeah. <laughs> Hate to tell you this, but yeah. yeah. So you're mixing sodium silicate yeah. with right. sand to make a core. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Trying to. And sodium silicate gets hard with carbon dioxide. Yep. And the stand will stand up to the intense heat. Yep. 3,000 degrees is what we're pouring at. But usually by the time we get it in the mold, yeah. it's right around 2,600 because it drops so quickly 400 fast. i mean we're not messing around either we're that is one of the biggest things that i've learned here how intense 3000 degrees furnace is compared to people you know i used to do aluminum and bronze at school yeah it wasn't anywhere near the intensity that monster is And this is called a finger muller. Finger muller. stuff's pretty good it won't get hard really hard it would over time because the co2 in the, the air yeah but you got quite a bit of working time with it we're gonna see how our uh, pusher pusher works got one disc in the bottom right to hold it in the center right. so far yeah now that's a piece of one inch PVC pipe that he took to put on the table saw slit a hinge on one side and a, all the way through on the other
is not going to work, is it? You're working pretty good. <laughs> Put plastic, clear plastic tape around that pipe so it hold it tight, shut. Yeah. He was getting fancy the other day. Put rings of wood around it, and it kind of bulged in the middle when he rammed it. So, yeah, I didn't have it uh, on there tight enough, and our rod here is not. Okay. We didn't need that piece. Mm -mm. Uh -oh. We did need that piece. <laughs> well, my point of trying it was was leaving that in there uh -huh. and packing it from the top, pushing that out. You don't know your own strength. You're packing it too hard, huh? Yes, sir. Main thing is we're keeping this rod pretty much concentric in alignment with the axis of the yeah. core. It's done better. Don't nail it to the tabletop, Clark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying not to. I think it held long enough to do what we wanted. Yeah. That'll leave your, your rod in there if you leave it just like that. Pretty much the right length. I need to try to get those discs out on this end now. I'm going to 
put just a little more on that. All right. I really wanted to try to get this out if I could. Get that face pretty good. should have done was cut a quarter inch hole on two of these on the bottom mm -hmm. to where I could inject the gas in. I gotta get this this out though. That all work. What's that? <laughs> that, that Mississippi toad oh, sticker yeah. there. So much I see goes into this stuff that I never even think about. Makes you appreciate not getting into it, don't it? Yeah. Yep. That's why you got the my steel pipe. I don't want a three thousand degree furnace. <laughs> yeah, it's not just that. It's every oh, it... little thing that goes into this. You have to be able to devise plans and. You have to be the crew of 20 people to do it. And there's so many skill There's not levels. enough money in it to, to hire no. 20 people. No, you can't. Not. It's just... I would feel better to cut one more disc and put a gas hole in there to where I can just stick that line in there and just leave it. Out of it yeah, and yeah. it's pushing out the other end alright taking out your big piece there alright that's fine I'm going to use some MDF for this piece anyway I can remember how big I cut it I think it was, I didn't save didn't you, it. I thought you saved the, the no, disc. I didn't. Well, I was going to cut a, 
Yeah, I probably got a spare one. I'll just cut a quarter inch hole in that. Ta da! Yeah. That's a pretty neat feature. Your the drawer? Yeah, the, the grid allows things to fall down there. Uh -huh. And instead of screwing around trying to pick it out like you're doing, yeah. you just open the door. Yeah. And now and you can put more fins in between those. You can well, see, yeah. See that. So. Now you sit there and uh you've stuck that one little disc in there on on the table. Uh-huh. And you're going to use the laser to cut a hole in that sucker. Yeah. Just like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, because that center hole needs to be there. For people for... like me that makes a lot of mistakes, that, that would be a, a must-have feature. Mm -hmm. the, the fun part's going to be um, finding the place to put it. Yeah. But that laser has that little... Yeah, you pointer can... feature that you can. So you made a circle. Yep. So I've kind of visualized where it's at. So that's. Uh... So that square right there is your table, basically. Though. Uh huh. And so you're just trying to get it over to a starting point. Yeah. Goes over. Well, you missed it. Yeah. And. You gotta have a door. Yeah, that's the safety feature. It's the idiot proof it, right? But I can tell you, looks like we're a little high, so. Still a little high. Still a little high. Not much. And, you know, I'm going to make that hole about 240. That precision rubber hose I'm gonna go, size? I'm going to go 235. Yeah, because that way it'll cram and seal it. Right. You've got a little dot that'll come on. I don't know if y'all pick it up, but he can use that to find the center of his hole. There he goes. Yeah, he's come this way, son. It's probably gonna cut into the other hole, isn't it? I don't know. I don't think we'll be close right there. to start up yeah and I'm telling it how much power I want and how many passes I want we're gonna go three passes at about 50% and that's true yeah <laughs> I would have tried to drill a hole through there with a drill and that <laughs> just popped right out. Yeah, pretty Sheesh. handy. That's that's pretty good. I like that. Got in there, and it keeps most of my gas. Most of my trying gas to go through there. Yeah, and the gas will wick all the way through. Yeah. Trying to sniff CO2 yeah. through there. Stop that. But I do have gas coming out right there. Put a piece of tape over it. Oh, it's got that spike sticking up. Take your towel and wrap around it. Toilet paper, even better. Yeah. We 
could have drilled some holes in the side of the pipe, but then that sand would have rammed through there and it'd be dang near impossible to get off and still save her mold. Mm -hmm. Just for all of you that thought of that. And after we get through with this, we've got to heat it up, dry it out, and be ready. Right. That little laser saved a heck of a lot of effort right there. It just did. Just by drilling that little hole. Yep. Uh. Let's see if this thing's going to turn out. that relax for a second. I'm gonna step out here. I'll be right back. Okay. And get it open enough to pour more gas in it. Or did it think it needed shouldn't need it we can we can do that i mean along the the edge well this way than it is the other. All right, we got lucky so far. Feel yeah. feel hard? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna torch this thing. Oh, going by Josie's workbench. Hey, Clark. Yeah. Josie's workbench is quite a bit more organized than yours is. Yeah. I might have to put one of my stickers on this one. Yeah, he, uh, he's making me look better. Yes, sir. We're going to heat it up to dry the moisture out of it. Right. And you don't want it wet inside that mold when that hot, 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 hot metal hits it. Now where this core's going in, there's going to be a, a tapered bore that actually holds this capstan on the top of it there. The cap, I guess it's called. I don't know what it's called. What's it called, Clark? What's that? The piece we're making. The jig? 
that's the jig. And are we going to graphite this and also? Yep. Keep it from sticking so bad right. to the metal? Yeah, that'll keep it from burning in. Kind of reminds me of a uh, corn dog. Yeah. Making me hungry. Looks like a cat tail to me. Yeah. The cat tail. Cool. Well, if uh, foundry work Peter's had on you, you can always be an artist. Yeah. Sculpturing cat tails. I sure enough won't be making any money then. Will <laughs> What you doing now? Yeah, I'm fixing to consume some alcohol. You know, that stuff will make you crazier than you already are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we are fixing to coat this core with a graphite layer. And that makes it much easier to get that core out because this, this core sand is not... Uh, there's no refractories in it like the green sand has to help with that. So I'm gonna coat it real good and make it easier to break it out. Yep. And the alcohol is just a vehicle that. Uh, Helps it float. Does your wife know you're out here consuming alcohol all no, the time? Not today, does she? And we're going to have to light this and get that alcohol out of there. Flaming cattails. Yes. Yeah. I'd say that's good. They'll take a chance. Yeah. <laughs> it's been too long. Ah, the heat. nice out here yeah it's one big furnace you got there yeah we gotta get that thing in use too it's spitting now ain't it i don't know if i want to handle that much iron with you i don't want to have to <laughs> probably should have let that Got all that graphite floating right to you. I should move. Just popping it out of those pores. Yeah, there isn't nothing to making these cast iron things. You just <laughs> put some sand in a box and ram it up and yep. you're finished. Simple as that.
And it's not like you're doing 50 of them where you could get a production line going. Yeah. Uh, one off everything. Yeah. Almost out of alcohol. Looks like we lost most of the graphite, don't it? I don't know. Uh, uh, it's in there pretty good. On to the next part. You bring that, there you go. Now it's going to be be sitting down. Yeah, I need to get a little more stable. Get you a bucket. Well, no, I don't need that. I think what I needed to do was go ahead and put this in place up here. Shine your light over here. I want to make sure I got my... Oh, your marks. Here. Yeah. See it over here and there too now. Okay. Right in there. Am I on it over here? No. Right there. Right there I... you are. All right. So now I'm going to push straight down. Is that thing already on the sand down there? Can't see. I must be. Looks like it. All right. Or does it? I don't know. I can't see her in my way again. that core was supposed to go on down more. Well, we never measured the core so much. <laughs> well, how about taking one of those round weights and put around it over it both so it's on both sides or one side yeah and then wiggle in it well i already did that last thing i want to do is break that sand up at the bottom okay right? yeah i think it's down yeah it is okay i feel that it's uh it's all the way down in there all right so let me make sure it's moved from my mark here and I did. Right there on and over here. Right there. All right. Let's get this one up just a little bit. Put it right there. Yeah. 
I don't know why, but that looks like it's when I when we first did that, I thought the core was that way, but it's and but it looks like it's closer this way now. Maybe I was standing here when I did it. I can't remember. But that's where it's going. I'll tell you what. Let me get my level. I think it's a little bit of an optical illusion. Yeah, it could be. Oh, or... Alright, so it's downhill just a little bit that way. weights laid on top of it maybe bump that. I wanted to make sure I didn't just shift the whole core. How many more? We don't put them all over. All of them. Okay. This. We're finally at a point where we can pour this. Yep. I know you. Uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. I wanted to ask you if you want to go grab a burger at the grill. I would. All right. I'm hungry. All right. Let's do that. 
Metal's over there where it's supposed to be.